a very big part of my classic win came back before the pre-practice time before january 1st when i could be on the water i went down and spent a couple days on fort loud and one day on teleco looking at mega imaging on that body of water i have fished here my whole life but it had honestly been quite a while back since i had spent much time down there i realized then that it had really been since i had side imaging much less mega imaging like what i have now to combine that with lake master mapping so I spent a few days down there on Fort Loudon really getting re-familiarized and looking at stuff with side imaging. I already knew how I wanted to fish, the depth I wanted to fish, the types of places. But I was able to look at places that I know are good, see what they look like on Lake Master, and then go side image them and make those waypoints. So when it come time for official practice, I didn't have to spend any of that time actually graphing then. I'd pull up on a place where I've got a waypoint marked, I'd drop my old tracks, and immediately that puts my 360 in the water, and that thing starts spinning. And I can see exactly what's going on underneath that water and make targeted casts to any of those isolated rock piles, individual stumps, anything else that was out there underneath the water where those fish were holding. When I'm looking for areas where I'm expecting bass to be staging up pre-spawn, I'm looking for places that have some pockets, that have some protected areas back here into them, but also that have some little high spots, some ridges, some points that stick out. You know, out towards, you've got, you can see we've got a main river channel right out here, extremely deep water. And then it comes right up on a shallow outside ridge. And then you've got a couple kind of levels inside. You've got, you know, a couple places for those fish to go while they're working their way back into the back where they're going to spawn you know, later on into these back pockets and stuff. But one thing great on Lake Master, it's got great detail. I mean, the, the one foot contour lines, but you've also got where it shows roadbed, shows the old house foundations. Now I've got the water level pulled down right now because on the Tennessee River system where the Bassmaster Classic was, the water was about four feet low being at winter pool. And then for me, I've got my depth highlight. I've got my shallow water set to four feet. And then I've got my highlight range from six and then I've got it two foot either direction, so two foot plus or minus. Those are just some of the cool features that are built into that mapping. But for me, most of my fish came, you can see where a lot of these waypoints are marked. They were either in that highlight range or they were actually right on the edge of the shallow water range where it met the green. So most of my fish came from that three to four foot, two to four foot range is where most of my bites came from down here. But with Lake Master, I was able to break those areas down where those fish were using coming from out here at the main channel and then these pre-spawn staging areas that those fish were pulled up on and I was picking them off of there with a lipless crankbait. The great part with mapping for me is a patterning tool. I'm able to set that highlight range or set the depth range once I figure out where those fish are and I can go all over the whole lake, all over the whole system and really pattern those fish extremely well. I waste less time and I'm always fishing exactly where I need to be. Just based off of my mapping and where I've gotten bites, I can adjust that. Hey, and hey, if it changes throughout the day, it's very easy to adjust those ranges that I've got highlights. Just click a couple buttons and it's changed. So I'm gonna hit menu twice, go over to HB chart, come down depth highlight range. I want my highlight, let's just say the fish have moved out deeper. I'm gonna move that out to eight foot. I still wanna only carry two foot either direction. So I'm gonna leave that there. So I'm covering six to 10 foot now. Leave my shallow water highlight at four just to keep myself safe as I'm motoring around. Lake is still about three foot low. Right there you go. You can see how this area was green. Now that is slid out a little bit more, highlighted that saddle. Those saddles in there just puts up, just makes it look a little bit different by changing that depth to just two feet. But then once it's time for the fun to begin, when I drop my trolling motor, put that 360 in the water, that's when I really start breaking it down and actually trying to catch a fish. When you look at that screen, you need to orient yourself as being the boat. And I've got it lined up to where I know straight ahead of the boat is what is straight ahead on that screen. So I know if something shows up dead ahead of the boat, just like that piece of wood that I can see above the water right there, it's gonna be straight ahead of me on the screen and I can make a cast straight out 12 o'clock off the bow. If it shows up over here, then I know I, I will, and I will actually do that. I will kind of look at, look at that screen and do this number and then make a cast exactly to where I see something on that screen. So once you've got the, everything in line, just imagine that being a compass heading and whichever direction that that is, I'll just turn my body to it and I'll point there and I'll immediately hit that target, whatever it may be that I'm trying to fish for. 
one other thing with it is that with those range rings, it gets to where I've developed a great feel. I've run it on 100 foot most of the time. I'll occasionally drop back to 80 for my range. So my range rings are either 20 or 25 feet. And I can see something out there and it's in between the second and third range ring. So I know it's between 50 and 75 feet out. I know just how long to make my cast to get beyond that target. And it doesn't matter what position it is, whether it's nine o'clock over here, three o'clock over there, straight in front of me. I see all directions all the time, regardless of where my trolling motor is pointing. Plus I have that history on that screen. So it doesn't immediately go away. I don't have to stare at it all the time to see what's going on. And I keep that history long enough to be able to adjust, make the cast, hit that target every single time. These areas that I fished during the classic, a lot of them were shallow offshore. And the deal with the way the fish were set up, they weren't big schools of fish. So you weren't gonna pull up on a place, you know, tallying down or spot lock and catch five or six, but you might catch two or three. And so it would be very important as I was working my way around the point, determine on whether the wind was blowing into my face or if I was going with the wind or with the current would, was my determining factor for whether I would spot lock or if I would put my talon down. So in a situation like this where I've got a little bit of headwind coming at me, if I caught a fish right here, got a bite, I'd actually hit spot lock to hold my position here. But now if I was being pushed along with the wind, being pushed up onto what I was trying to fish in that situation is when I would deploy my talon. I was rarely sitting deeper than six or seven feet and I run 10 foot talon so I'd be able to talon down pretty well anywhere I was fishing. So those was kind of the determining factors, whether I had a headwind or I had a tailwind, whether I spot locked on the front or I talon down on the back.